Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. The Lord, the good Lord says, oh, he, he wants to take away our sin. Can any of you remember that day? That, that sweet day when you, when you finally, yourself, look to the cross. How good did it feel to know your sin was washed away completely? Clean slate, starting over, there's nothing. Jesus erased it all. How good does that feel? I mean, I'm telling you, David, when he got into sin with Bathsheba, he, he did some pretty bad things to try to cover that sin. He actually got a guy killed, her husband killed, for his own sin. And then we read in Psalm 51, in verse 10, that he finally cries out, Lord, create in me a clean heart. He knew his heart had become polluted. And he said, and, 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 and he said, create in me a clean heart and, and, and take not thy holy, what? Spirit away from me. Don't take your spirit from me. I need that. And he says, and, and restore unto me something. What was he asked for restoration of? The joy of his salvation. When he, when, when he, when he he's like, pass me not away from your presence, Lord, and, and take not your Holy Spirit from me, and, and restore that joy, that joy that we get. See, and the people who have not looked to Jesus, they don't understand what we're talking about. When we say there is the sweetest, greatest joy that you will ever taste in this life, I tell you, the joy of knowing your sins are done. They are erased completely. Man, you talk about a, like inside what it does for you. It just like, oh, that's gone. Jesus paid for it. Didn't mean it didn't happen. Didn't mean it didn't hurt. But he bared the guilt and the penalty for all of our mistakes. When he became that Lamb of God to take away, not to cover up the sins of the world, to take them away. That's the gospel. That's how easy it is. Pretty good news, huh? The God, he came to take away our sins. Now Paul is telling this little church, this is the importance of the gospel. Don't, don't make it, you know, you guys are a light in a dark place. And it's not, you don't have to be clever. Listen to verse 19. He quotes actually from Isaiah 29. He says, he says, uh, uh, he says or 20, he says, For it is written, I will d destroy the wisdom of the wise. And the cleverness of the clever, the Lord says, I will set aside. Now, I want you guys, if you don't mind, turn to Isaiah 20. I'm going to show you where Paul, now Paul is definitely a master of the scripture. Is obvious. The more you read the writings of Paul in the New Testament, you know this guy had the Old Testament down. I mean, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, schooled under Gamaliel. He was, he was a student of the Word. He knew the Old. Well, well, those those were they didn't call it Old Testament then. They just called them the Jewish Scriptures. The New Testament gets added after Christ comes to this world, but before that, everything leading up, they already had these books, and the prophet. Isaiah, who I like a lot because we have the same nickname, is, he says this. This is pretty cool, actually. I mean, he says, to, he says let me start with um, verse 11. Isaiah 20, verse, I'm sorry, 29. I said 20, didn't I? 29. Sorry. Oh, I am tired. It was one of those nice, not a lot of sleep, but... It's so, okay, Aaron says I'd preach better when I'm exhausted, so I have to rely on the Lord. He says here, the entire vision, 20, uh, Isaiah 29, 11, the entire vision will be to you like words of a sealed book, which he says when they were given, when, when they give it to, to the one who is literate, saying, please read this, he will say, I can't, because it's sealed. And the book will be given to the one who's literate, saying, please read this. And he'll say, uh, or to illiterate, the illiterate, and they'll say, I can't because I can't read. Here's the words of the Lord, but nobody gets it. You ever, have you ever shared with somebody and something about the Lord, and they just look at you like deer in headlight look? Like, huh? What are you talking about? You know, like you're stupid. He says, don't worry. 
This is how the word of the Lord comes to people sometimes. It comes to them and they go, I can't read it. Or I, even if I could, I don't get it. In verse 13, then the Lord says, Because this people draw near with their words and honor me with their lip service, but they remove something. What did they remove? Their hearts. He says, their heart are far from me. And their reverence for me consists only of traditions what are learned by rote. Therefore, behold, I, I once again deal marvelously with this people, wondrously, marvelously. He says, and the wisdom of their wise men will perish, and the discernment of their discerning men will be concealed. And woe to those who deeply hide their plans from the Lord and whose deeds are done in dark places. He says, they say, who sees us? Who knows? You know, like, I can get away with anything. God doesn't even know. And what's, what's Isaiah the prophet say in verse 16? You turn things around. He said, shall the potter be considered as equal to the clay? Or has what has been made say to its maker, he didn't make me? Or who is formed say to him who formed it, he... He doesn't understand. He has no understanding. He doesn't even know. Yet, do people do this? God doesn't know. He has no understanding. Isaiah says, that's stupid. Well, no, he didn't say I said that. It is stupid. The thing that has been made by the maker is saying to the maker, you don't have any understanding. Let me see. Have you made any life in, you know, all the earth and the universe and all that it contains in six days? When you think about how, how awesome the universe is, how great, the, you know, just all of the whole, it's a, every, every day they're discovering new things about our universe, how great it is, how big it is. And you think, the Lord made all of that, and it says in, in the span of how many days? Six. And the seventh day he rested. I think he's got a lot going upstairs if you can make everything in six days. And I know some people are, well, it's not really literal six days. It's like a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. It was God's day, so it was probably a thousand years. It took him 6,000 years to make everything. Really? Could you make it in 6,000 years? First of all, I couldn't live 6,000, so we got a bit of a problem. But if you want to hold to something like that, I, you know, Isaiah would say, professing to be wise, they become what instead? Fools. Sometimes the stuff that we come up with in our greatest wisdom. Well, turn back with me. This is the passage that Paul is quoting from. Now, not that the church at Corinth might know this, but the good Jews would know this. That this is the part where Isaiah says, here's the book. Here, can you read it to us? And they go, um, it's sealed. They can't. Or I can't read. You just can't get it. And it's funny how sometimes the things of the Lord, you're going to tell some people about things of the Lord and they're going to look at you like you are stupid. I don't get it. It can't be. It, how can anti-venom fix a snake bite just by looking at a bronze serpent on the top of a staff? How can looking at a cross just magically take away your sins? To the, to the one who doesn't have enough faith to look, Is it going to work for them? No. Because if you, can you just see those Jews going, I, ain't, I don't believe it'll work. Yep, I, I'm sure, I'm not even going to look. Did any of them do that in the story? Yeah. And what happened? They died. they died. And there will be people, unfortunately, that I, I, I hope that I, I somehow can persuade them not to be that stubborn. But sometimes you share with people and they're like, I ain't going to look. I don't care what you say. I don't care how good you say it is. I don't care how nice it feels to have your sins washed away. I'm going to keep my sins and hang on to them. All the guilt, all the shame, it's mine. I earned it. Go ahead, wallow in it. I don't find that as like any great boast, do you? I mean, sin messes up people. But Jesus came to free them. And listen to this, verse 21 of 1 Corinthians. or I'm sorry, verse 20. Where is the wise man? Paul says, where's the scribe? Where's the debater of this age? 
Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom, it did not come to know God. And God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For indeed, the Jews ask for signs, and the Greeks, they, they search for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews, it's a stumbling block. To the Gentiles, it's foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, it, it, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. You know, the cool thing about the gospel to me is that God's wisdom, it, his high, the Bible says his lowest basis thought, his most simplest, easiest thought for God to think. Down at the bottom of the range is higher than man's highest thought. God's lowest thought's up here and we can't even get up to it. And if you can't accept that, I'm sorry, but you want some God that you're like on equal plane with or that you're greater than, then that's not really God. You have created an idol for yourself. Because the Bible declares that we have a maker that is greater than all of us. And we're just the, we're just the clay. He's the potter. And he gets to choose how to make us. And in his wisdom, he made the gospel so simple that nobody can get excluded. Like you don't have to be, have some special skill, some special, you know what I mean? Everyone is welcome to look to Jesus. You say, well, what about the guy who's blind? Are we talking about physical looking? No. It's with the, with the eyes of the Spirit. With the ears that the Spirit of God gave you. You know, Jesus would end his sermons. He'd say, let those that have an ear to hear, let them what? Hear what the Spirit says. You have eyes, the spiritual eyes of your being. God has created you with a living Spirit inside you. And your Spirit, oh, it, it is made for eternity. And God wants you to spend it with Him in paradise. All you have to do is look to His provision for your salvation. And that's Jesus. Plain and simple. And He made it so simple that to the world they go, that's just too simple. What's the catch, you know? What do I have to give? Or what, what do you do to earn it? You can't. It's a gift. The only thing you can do to get a gift is what? receive it and God made it so that nobody else can boast over another person well I received it better than you received it come on we both received it quit acting like we're some special guys who received it better than the other guys I mean it's a gift we all put our hands out and said I'll take it and it was ours that was it God just said here you go and it's so simple it's like nobody's excluded everyone is welcome to get this gift all they gotta do is say I'll take it and God goes, there you go. He is waiting to give salvation to any, any who will come to him. He's here. I give you everlasting life. It's a gift. Now, it's a valuable gift. Just because it is given by God freely to us didn't mean it was free to him. It cost him the life of his only begotten son to make that gift free for you. It was paid with a huge price. But it's valuable. And if we would just treat it like it's valuable, if we would just tell people, you don't get it, this is the most valuable thing ever. This is the thing that, man, it is, it is so good. It says here in verse, he says, verse 25, because of the foolishness of God, that it is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men, he says, for consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many that were wise according to the flesh, not many that were mighty, not many that were noble, but instead God has chosen, here's my qualifications for the God ministry, God has chosen the what things of the world? The foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. He's chosen the base things of this world and the despised God has chosen that the, the things that are not, so that he may nullify the things that are, so that no man may boast before God. Here's how you get to be a 
qualified for the ministry, you might as well suck it up, pastors, if you think you're great. We only got the job because God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I mean, this will be a blow to some pastors' egos, but not mine. I already know. Like, you know, and I tell people this, they're like, oh, you shouldn't talk like that about yourself, pastor. You really got it together. No, God has it together, and he helps me hold on by my fingernails sometimes just to get by. And he's the one that really gets the credit for keeping it together. I don't have it together. I have a God who has it together. Now, I don't mind telling you that because there are others who are hurting who need to know how great he is. And if you act like you're the one that's all great, you're doing a disservice to the cross of Christ. You're not pointing people to the place where they can get the help that you got. And you're, and you're somehow making... You're, you're taking your glory hog is what you are. And taking away God's glory from his son and trying to somehow get a pat on your back. Oh, look at me. I'm on the team. Like somehow God needed you on his team. This is, this is not the playground when we were little playing dodgeball, you know. And everybody went, oh, man, let's get all the best guys on our team. I mean, did any of you ever get picked last? You know, because... There was these other athletic folks that got picked before you, and, and you just like, oh, no, we got like five duds on the team today. We're going to lose for sure, you know. You know what? When God picks the team, he goes, give me all the duds. Twelve of them. Yeah. One of them betrays him. One of them denies him. You know, they all don't really hang out when he goes to the cross. They get a little, you know, skittish. You read the story. They're, they're not a perfect one in the bunch. And yet, he was able to turn the whole world upside down with duds. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.